It's that time again. Yep. We are Team Wester. And you are the most important thing to us. Team Wester Podcast. It's all about the team. Welcome back to another exciting edition of the Western Podcast. I'm Clay Moden with Brad Gelber back on location today. Another exciting episode today. We've got some special guests joining us this morning. Yeah, we got uh, Del Reed here, the infamous Del Reed from 26 Shirts. Uh, thanks for joining us, Del. I'm just flattered you called me special. Yeah. Special guest. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, of course, everything's going great with Buffalo football. We're going to be talking more about that in just a few minutes. But uh, I saw a great stat that... I'm very proud. Of, I'm sure all Buffalonians are. You guys are just under the $1.5 million mark for money raised from 26 shirts. Did you ever imagine that? How cocky would it be for me to say, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, when you <laughs> started course, it no. out, what yeah. was the goal? I don't know, to get through a year and just see how much good we could do. It was going to be a one-year project, and it was so well-received, and we had so many different artists reaching out that wanted to contribute. We had so many people asking for help. Um, and we were having enough fun doing it that we decided let's do it for a second volume and it just kind of grew and grew from there. And now it's, it is, you know, it's, here we are, you know, almost 1.5 million. It's crazy. It's but, incredible. Yeah. yeah. And you no know, doubt, I, I think maybe we owe it to the people here listening and watching. I think maybe we assume everyone knows who Del Reed is because how could you not? But if, if you don't know who Del Reed is, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. What, who are you? Like, what do you do? And, you know, how'd you get to this point, as Clay said? Yeah, um, first of all, I'm really just a dude. <laughs> I'm really just a, no a normal Bills fan like anybody else who would be listening to this um, podcast. But um, it's, I've had a, a sequence of a lot of crazy things happen in a row. A lot of, um, as Bob Ross would say, happy accidents. Yeah. <laughs> just none of it was planned. And um, as things happened, as, as opportunities fell in my lap, I just I saw the, the chance to use whatever um, platform that was kind of being built, mm -hmm. you know, for me um, to use it for good. Yeah. And, you know, uh, to whom much is given, much is required. Yeah. And or as Uncle Ben said, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> and so I've always tried. Yes, <laughs> I've always tried to 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 live that way, yeah. you know. So, and you started off obviously in the beginning, you know, you were a football fan just like anyone else and uh, something kind of special happened to you. You know, I'm sure everyone here has heard of, you know, the F Buffalo group of fans that we call the Bills Mafia here, but like for yourself, like you're actually one of the co-founders of, of that organization that's grown beyond, I think, anything anyone could imagine, but you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll try to give you the abbreviated version. It's a, like a half hour podcast, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was basically an inside joke between myself and a few other Bills fans um, on Twitter, just defending the team, defending, um, defending the team. We're, we're, we, uh, Buffalo, Buffalo fans can be so like uh, uh, oversensitive, but we're, we're no different. We're oversensitive. We're quote unquote protecting uh, Stevie Johnson in terms of a, a retweet that came a day later. It sounds so weird when you say it out loud, right? It's like, <laughs> well, what were you mad about? Yeah. But well, the football wasn't so great for quite a number of years there. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, it was an inside joke that kind of took off. It became uh, a movement among Bills fans that was not about just supporting the team on the field, but also uh, supporting the players off the field and supporting the community. And that's what I'm most proud of is that all the stuff that happens, you know, you know, between the the goal lines or whatever, but whatever is going on on the field is one thing. But we have proven that it is so much bigger than than that our fandom is more than just fandom for a professional sports team it's a love for our community 26 obviously was the every two week uh the idea started that you'd have a shirt every two weeks but i understand you're you're doing more than that these days yeah as i mentioned a moment ago it was going to be a one-year community service project that i did you know a different shirt every two weeks a different family we'd be helping 52 divided by 2 is 26. It made sense at the time. I spent the past almost nine years explaining it to people. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as the audience grew, as, as, the, as everything just grew, we realized that there was more opportunities to do more good. And the wait list kept getting longer and longer. And you felt, I felt bad, like, oh, yeah, I can help you. Uh, I'll talk to you in nine months. Mm. And so, you know, what we decided was at that point we felt like the – we could be diverse enough where it, 
the shirts wouldn't be competing against each other. Right. In, in terms, you know, of, you know, the variety of the designs and everything. Um, and so we just started doing it. It's still a two week campaign that we give every family, but now we do it every week. Um, so how does this work? Do you hear from the families then come up with a design or is it design and then pick the family? It's, it's usually we, the families will reach out to us. So right now we're running at about four month wait list. So there's no way that we could have a design planned for, you know, January per se. Actually, we, uh, it's that playoff football. We have a couple of designs already, but, <laughs> but as a, as a rule, um, so the families will often reach out and we'll ask them, do you have a preference? Are you more of a football fan or a hockey fan? And not to make jokes, but it, you know, when the hockey team is doing better, it, it's a more of a relevant question. True. But um, we'll, we'll ask them like, what are some of their preferences? And I, I tell them straight up, like, just so you know, like if I can steer it that way, I will. But our goal is to raise as much money for you as possible. We're, we're trying to tap into whatever, you know, Western New York or the Western New York expats. Cause we ship a lot of shirts out of state. Um, whatever they are excited about. We want to give them that. So um, it's so to answer your question, that's a really long way to say families first, design second. How, how does, um, have you ever had to say no? I mean, how do you determine, uh, worthy is not the word, but how do you determine the family you want or, or how does that go? There's honestly, in the almost nine years now, there's only been like one or two times where I said, I'm sorry, I don't think this is a fit. Mm -hmm. um, but to that point, one thing that we've kind of, we've tried to refocus in the past, you know, six months or so is we were doing a lot of work for, for local nonprofits and the, all their work is worthy and I'll, we'll still continue to support them however we can. But the special editions and the comebacks, those are the designs that we re-release. We normally do those every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Those would normally go to uh, a local nonprofit. We've decided that our, you know, we kind of got away from our mission. I felt like so, you know, we're giving that family that we launch on Monday, we're giving them another campaign on Wednesday. We want to give them another kick at the can because it, it would get frustrating sometimes when we would launch a shirt on Monday and it would do, meh, and then we'd launch the one on Wednesday and it would, you know, get knocked out of the park. Right, and, well, top of mind awareness type thing. Right, and just maybe it was a better design for that fit or something, you know, because we take a lot of swings, so they're not all going to be home runs. But right. maybe we hit a single on Monday, but we hit a triple on, on Wednesday. Our mission is to support families in tough situations. And so we've had to, you know, lately I've had to tell some, you know, different nonprofits, hey, listen, if I can help you another way, I'm absolutely here to do it. Right now, though, the majority of our t-shirt campaigns are going towards families. Now, we have a lot of other stuff that's longstanding on the website that we keep that, that continues to support nonprofits and stuff. And it's not a hard, fast rule, but that's something we're really trying to do is support the families as much as possible. And, you know, Del, for 26 shirts, obviously, like, this started off, you said, as a project. And, you know, it actually transitioned to now your full-time career in terms of, you know, you're overseeing a business and you have people working for you and you've grown your business. So what's that been like to kind of, you know, I know you personally and you've, you've expressed before the fact that this was kind of like a dream come true. You were able to kind of, like, transition out of your old kind of career and then you saw this opportunity and it, the timing and such. Like, what was that like to kind of, all right, step into this and really create something from it? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it's it's hard. It's it's mind blowing. I guess is the easy answer. This is not what I thought I was going to be doing in my life. I thought I was going to work in a cube for thirty years, retire, move to Florida, probably get out of Florida during the September. <laughs> Sorry for the Florida jokes, but no. But um, but you know, re retire and be done with it. And um, this was not the pivot I thought my life was ever going to take. But to do it now, I feel like I've my entire life I was misemployed. Like, I feel like this is what I've supposed to be doing with my life, you know, the whole time. And so um, to be able to create a, a place to work, you know, for our employees and, you know, to be able to give back to these families, um, it's, there's, there's no other, there's no better way to, to live, in my opinion, that I, for me. You know, I just, I'm happy to give the employees a fun place to work where it's laid back and fun. And, you know, we have some very, serious things that we deal with in helping these families. So we balance it out and we try to have a lot of fun and we goof off and, you know, we have a papa shot in there and yeah. two o'clock, you know, uh, in the afternoon, it's a great time to get up, stretch your legs and, you know, brag about how you just got the high score and papa shot, which I don't get to do often, but, <laughs> um, but it, no, it's, it's just a, we try to create a great work environment as well. Right. And, you know, we're here, obviously, like Clay said, Team Wester podcast, and we're having you on. First official guest, by the way, for people watching and listening. It's a, you know, honor to have Dell on. But, you know, Dell, you've been now working with Wester. You know, we've known each other for a while now, and it's been a cool transition to see kind of 
you the company grow as you know we've grown and this concept's grown so you know we started off just kind of doing one of your your sponsorships back in the day a few years ago and obviously that relationship's grown quite a bit and we can get into that in a little bit but you know what's that been like for you to kind of you know work with West Her and now we've seen this you know thing blossom over time oh it's it's awesome there's nothing uh more surreal than seeing a giant 50 foot, 100 foot, 10,000 foot, I don't know how big that, <laughs> that, that blow up uh, Josh Allen is that you have outside sometimes, but he's, and he's got a 26 shirts label on his, his chest or on a billboard or on the side of a truck. It's crazy, you know, and it's, you know, that's the kind of brand awareness that we're not able to get. Um, so it's just, it's been an awesome partnership being able to work with West Her. West Her believes in our mission. Um, and I always tell, you know, as I try to explain what sponsorships are, uh, to people who are, you know, who are asking, but as I try to explain to, to businesses or not to businesses, to families that we help, um, why, you know, every business analyst that we've worked with or consultant has worked, we've worked with has told us that we give too much. This is how we offset it. We have sponsorships and, and we say, and, and I'll say like, basically it's, it's advertising for these sponsors, but West Her doesn't need 26 shirts. They, you know, I, I'm pretty sure people are going to know about West Her, whether we exist or not. But West Her believes in the mission of 26 Shirts, and they want to support us. And, uh, you know, Matt has been a great resource for me. He actually, you know, we have other sponsors as well, yeah. too. Um, Matt really helped me flesh out what that looked like. So when I came to these other, you know, prospective sponsors, I had something that was, you know, made sense. And it was kind of like speaking their language and everything. So it's, it's more than just like, oh, yeah, you know, they put our, our shirt on Josh Allen and they, you know, they sponsor these shirts, but it's so much more than all these different things that you can't even like, um, intangibles. Right. So it's been great. Right. And, and for people watching, maybe that don't know, we talked about this on the first episode of the podcast last week. Um, you know, we're not the official sponsor of the, of the football team in, here in Buffalo. We've found creative ways to create this concept team Western and everything. So when we were creating this concept, we thought, all right, well, they need to wear something, right? Like, they, they, we can't just have them wearing nothing. So, um, unfortunately, we can't just throw the jersey on them. So, let's come up with a creative way. And we had that relationship with 26 shirts. So, I remember we brought it to you guys and we said, well, maybe we're thinking like a, a shirt, jersey thing. And then now we use this word, jersey. We just throw around. Everyone spells it differently, by the way, in the office. <laughs> I spell it S H I R S E Y. That's the right we get way. As far as we get all these different <laughs> spellings. Matt spells it one way, Megan, our creative. Uh, director or manager here she spells it enough so everyone's spelling it a different way but um you know what was that like I guess to kind of create that concept of like now it's like you said all over everything but it's it's essentially what our our jersey is for this whole team West Jersey yep. Jersey yeah no that credit 100% goes to our creative director Josh he is insane and when I, I remember when I told him about what West Her was looking for he immediately said I got I got it yeah. and if I remember when we originally did it we had a blue jersey, a white jersey, yep. and a red jersey, right. and he did an awesome job putting the three together um, for you guys. And I'm I'm really proud to have him on our staff. And um, you can throw anything at him, and he'll come out with an amazing product. So I can take no credit for that, other than other than I was smart enough to hire the guy. Right. So <laughs> uh, you, you mentioned Josh Allen and Deion Dawkins and the, all the great Wester team members. Have you built a relationship with them? At all? I mean, other than professional, are you able to t contact these guys on a regular basis? Um, yeah, Dion, actually, he reached out to me in March of 2019, and <laughs> he sent me an email from a Gmail account that said, Dion Dawkins, Buffalo Bills. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I he, believe that. Yeah. <laughs> he seems that ordinary, right? That's absolutely he's, he's true. He's super, he's like, you know, for somebody who is, you know, the level of talent that he is, and he, he's... It's crazy. He's just the most down to earth guy. Mm -hmm. um, so he uh, he showed up. It was just like March or April of of 2019, and he showed up. And that day, I was the only one in the office. We had a smaller staff back then. I was the only one in the office that day. And he came in. He was there for about an hour. We spent about 45 minutes talking about what we thought was going to happen in Avengers Endgame. <laughs> and, and, and then about Sean McCoy, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah right. But. Um, and then the last 15 minutes, I was like, all right, dude, so uh, how can I help you? What do you want? Why are you here today? <laughs> yeah. And so then uh, he tells me about this, this brand that he's, you know, he has his snow brand and everything. And um, we, you know, we, we knew that we weren't, you know, he has somebody else working with him on that now, which is totally fine. We knew that we weren't like long for that, but we wanted to help incubate it, get him set up, get it going, you know, um, get some of the products together for him and everything and just, you know, get him on a good footing. Um, but he's great. Like I could, you know, 
give him a ring right now, he'd probably hit me back or whatever. He's a busy guy. Hopefully he's not. Hopefully he's working on the, the game. But like he's and, such a great normal person. And that's extended into national broadcast for you. I mean, ESPN reporters are reaching out to you. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, when you say it out loud, it's really weird. Right? I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it says a lot about where you started and where you are now. National recognition. Yeah, it, it's 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 crazy, and it's something that I, I I don't take for granted. It's it's just another opportunity for us to hopefully, you know, first of all, to show the the country how awesome Buffalo and Western New York is, and how we truly are the city of good neighbors. Um, but you know, it's also a chance to get the twenty six shirts brand out there a little bit more, and so that people can learn about us. Not so that like I I can drive a. You know, uh, the whole goal is not to drive a better car. What do you want to drive, though, by the way? We have quite a few cars. <laughs> Dude, all, all the cars, everybody in my family knows that if you, you, didn't, if you didn't go to West Her, that that was going to be mad because, yeah. like, West Her is so good to, to 26 Hertz. But, like, um, the whole goal is just to – we want people to be aware of our brand so that we can do more good. Right. We want to be able I – mean, shoot, what if we could do a, a, a two shirts every Monday and help, you know, four families? It just – I don't know. Uh, four families in the time that it would take us to do one back in the original day. Who knows? But like that's the whole point of it all. So, um, yeah, no. But to answer your question, it's it's weird. Like when like Michelle Steele is just randomly like texting you, like, "Hey, do you want to do an interview with Andy Dalton?" You're like, "Yeah, sure, I'll do a FaceTime with Andy I Dalton." Yeah. Um, so that's it, it's crazy. And like I said, none of it's taken for granted. And um, you know, you don't know how long you have as an for an opportunity in the spotlight. You just want to make the most of it while you have it. And I think Dell that you know. Dell's a really humble guy for people watching. Maybe you don't you don't know Dell, but he's you're a humble guy. Um, I remember when I nobody's first, more humble than me. Yeah. I'm the humblest. <laughs> when I first started off writing, though, actually, um, you know, for some local blogs, and I talked about this last time, I would just DM Dell the link, and I would be like, "Hey, man, can you just retweet this from the uh, the Bills Mafia account because it has like hundred thousands of followers?" I'm like, so in a second, Dell was always like, "Yeah, no problem." So like you you know, I think it just speaks to the nature of who you are, and it's it's kind of gone beyond. Like we talk about the West Her culture. We talk about our core values and we have a list of things that we really believe in in Western when we hire people, the people that we work with, you know, and, and I think that embodies kind of what your mission's been with 26 Shirts. And I think that's why that synergy was there early on with helping out, you know, obviously Scott Beeler, our CEO president, that's like in his DNA and he's, you know, transcended it down mm -hmm. throughout all of us. So I think that's been that natural kind of, you know, transition with us working with you over the years. Um, but I think, you know, it makes sense. Obviously, we recorded the first podcast two weeks ago, coming off the, the first win of the season here. Um, everyone was really excited. We were talking, Clay and I were talking about him uh, as his PA work at the stadium, leading into the home opener um, for everyone watching. And obviously that game went really, really well. So yes. I want to make sure we start there before we get to maybe the more recent news. Uh, so Clay, how was it like yeah. being at the so stadium? So from, from my perspective, being in the public address booth, it was screechingly loud. Like, I've heard loud before when New England comes to town, Monday night football games, Sunday night football. But when Buffalo was introduced, it was screechingly loud to the point where I couldn't even hear myself talk. I knew my mouth was moving and I could feel my chest, but I could not even hear myself. And I got chills thinking about it. Uh, it resonated uh, to the players. Like, you could just feel the energy. Um, the fans have a huge part every game. Buffalo owned that night, and you could just feel it from the get-go. It was incredible. And you could I hope see, we see more of that yeah, this year. And you could see in the stadium, I mean, my, my sister and her fiancé have season tickets, and I was texting her the next day, and she was saying, you know, I was like, well, when the blowout was on and the backups were in, I was like, what was it like? And she was like, it was so crazy. And I was like, it looked like on TV, like no one was leaving. I was right. like, I was like, like, cause people were complaining. Oh man, I was stuck in Trevor for three hours. I'm like, you could have left in the, th at halftime <laughs> after in the third quarter, but it just seemed like everyone stayed literally for the party that night. Pretty much. Now, do you go to the games, Dell? Are you, yeah. uh, obviously you're a fan and you've got a business there, but do you go to see the games or do you prefer to see it somewhere else at home? No, absolutely. I want to be there screaming my head off and going into work the next day dog it like this absolutely. you know absolutely it's um yeah for sure that that uh, opening game though to have it on a monday night uh, just an incredible thing and it just goes to show you that bills mafia buffalo football fans are ready for this yeah and i think too we saw you know we saw a little difference, obviously, the, the last game, which we'll get to in a minute. But that, th that game alone, I think everyone was like, okay, you know, we talked about is, are these Super Bowl expectations too much? Is it real? Uh, I think in that game, we all felt like, all right, like, yeah, those are real again. Like, we're seeing Josh Allen in, in prime mode on primetime TV versus a team that 
historically over the last couple of seasons, Buffalo struggled with mm-hmm. and they contained Derrick Henry. There was no, no qualms about it. They owned that night. Um, and I just think we all left that game feeling like, all right, like we are confident right now. So Josh game. Allen was not the AFC uh, offensive player of the week following that game. Yeah. If he plays in the fourth quarter, does he get that? Because he had a whole 15 minutes right. of football. He wasn't right. even on the field. Right. 17, I think. 18 minutes if you count the third quarter. Yeah, I mean, Dell, you can give your opinion. But I think, yeah, I mean, he was unbelievable that night. And I just think that we all were, at least me, my, I was holding my breath the entire time. when they, I was like, all right, just get him out of the game at this point. Like, <laughs> I don't care game. about whatever the <laughs> ranking or the, the weekly awards are from NFL.com or whatever. I'm like, just get Josh out of the game. Get everyone out of the game. Let's just stay healthy, which ironically was... <laughs> something we encountered the week after, but just stay healthy and let's move on. Um, and they got out of there. It seemed un- pretty unscathed. Obviously, unfortunately, we should just mention obviously the Micah Hyde incident. Right. Um, you know, we're, we're, we've been proud sponsors of the Micah Hyde softball tournament. Does a lot of good. Micah's done a lot of good in the community. Really unfortunate to see him go down with the neck injury and kind of be out for the season. But um, it seemed like, okay, we're, we're doing pretty well going into this Miami game. And then mm. all of a sudden... Uh, Quite a different result the other day. Del, when you yeah. watch uh, the games that are out of town, um, are you watching with friends or do you stay at home? How's that work? Uh, it's it's different every time. Like this past game against Miami, I was actually in Virginia, at Jimmy's Old Town Tavern, a uh, uh, really prominent Bills Backers bar in Northern Virginia. He invite he, he does this big party every year. Um, I think Scott Norwood Norwood was there. Jeff Nixon was there. Um, Je- uh, Jeffrey Miller, local author, he was there. And so he invited us to, you know, set up and rep 26 years. Scott Norwood. Scott Norwood was there. Yeah, it was crazy. What's he up to these days? <laughs> uh, hanging out, going to Bill's Backers. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't wow. know. I, I, I had no idea. That's great. I, actually, I heard he's a real estate agent. Now. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so it's something different, you know. When you we'll see him, do you, have, do you bring it up? Do you bring up the kick or is it just... I mean, I, I feel like, Scott, oh, how did God, it go the next day? That's the last. I don't know. It's just. Uh, yeah, I was like, dude, if it was 46, do you think you would have made it? <laughs> I mean, it'd be hard not to bring it up, but I guess you just can't. But that's a great blast from the past to see somewhere. Yeah, he looks good. He looks good. Um, Jeff Nixon looks good. He's, he's around town. If you've been to, you know, different events in Buffalo, you've probably seen Jeff. You must but. get invites to all the backer bars. I, I, yeah, sometimes. I get a lot of invites. I don't, you know, a lot of it is like, I'm not, I'd love to, but it's not easy to, to get out to you know, Colorado or Wyoming right to travel or whatever. Easiest, but, as that would be. Um, 26 shirts doesn't have a private jet. To, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no private jet. No private jet. No, yeah, nothing like that. We um, actually saw Jeff Nixon um, recently, uh, Steve Tasker. Congratulations, by the way, to Steve, was recently awarded uh, the Buffalo Bra- Bra- Broadcasters Association Hall of Fame inductee this year. Uh, so congrats to Steve. But he was actually, Jeff Nixon was at the event the other night that we sponsored for Steve. So always good to see the, the former guys around, like you said, um, in the area. Um, but, you know, just talking to, like, you were telling us about the business model with 26 shirts. And It actually makes a difference when Buffalo wins or loses. You were talking a little bit about it because, unfortunately, you know, we're coming off a loss now. So tell us a little bit about, like, what's the difference with these T-shirts? Because it is a real thing, obviously, from a business standpoint. Yeah, we have a baseline, you know, that we kind of had an expectation of what we're going to sell or a projection um, as best we can. You know, you never know what the market's going to bear. But it's definitely we sell more uh, on a Sunday night after the bills win or Monday night or whenever, um, because people are excited, they're happy, you know, and that's just how humans work. If if the, when the bills lose, I, so, okay. So I have a a whole slew of podcasts I listen to all week long, including um, the team, including, including the team (laughs) West hurt, including, um, but when, when they lose, I'll listen to one or two and then I get out. (laughs) I I don't want to hear about how, you know, Josh, uh, short-armed it to Isaiah McKenzie mm-hmm. or how Matt Milano uh, dropped a pick six or, or all, you know, all the different things. I, I heard it once. I know what happened. Right. I, but now you say the opposite. You, you, I, I'm happy to read about how Josh Allen was out <laughs> right. in the fourth quarter. Like, I'll, listen to, I'll read that all day. I'll listen <laughs> yeah. to that all day. Um, so just, you know, everybody is kind of like emotionally tied to the success of the team. So, yeah, it, it goes up and down in, in respect to that. But like I said, um, there's still kind of like a baseline that we have that we can kind of expect, you know, people are going to come around. We try to make sure the designs are almost like loss proof. Sure. That, that's a lot of pressure we put sure. on ourselves. We have, you know, because one of the things with, with 26 shirts is we're putting out all these different shirts, but 
you know, for us, it's just another Monday, right? We're right. just launching another shirt. Um, but this family has been waiting for four months. Mm -hmm. So we have to bring it. Win or like, lose. Yeah, yeah, we cannot, we don't mail anything in. We have to bring it every single Monday. So um, we have to make sure that, you know, even if the everybody's favorite team loses, the, the design is still good enough to like people, people can see past their angst or frustration yeah. or depression or whatever they're feeling after a loss um, and say, you know what, I still want to have that in, in my closet. Right. When moments happen during a game, win or loss, uh, are you guys texting back and forth, you and your creative staff, like that needs to be on a shirt tomorrow? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have a, a, a Slack channel. If people are familiar with Slack, it's a great messaging platform for, for businesses. And we have one that's just called Ideas. And on a game day, that thing is just – sometimes it feels like it's rolling. There's, there's so many different ideas that are coming in and so many um, – Anything from these past games that – Not not Sunday. <laughs> no, I wasn't sure if there was anything you saw that would be like, okay, this has to be part of a shirt soon. Yeah, there was, there was actually um, a, a couple of things that happened – um, in the Monday night game that I'm not going to speak to because I don't, don't want to I don't want to show my hand. I'm always yeah. trying to get the scoop here, Brad. <laughs> yeah, All right, I don't blame you. I can't wait now. You got <laughs> yeah. me interested. Yeah. I can't wait. But in terms of the Miami game, obviously, you know, it just we would be remiss not to mention the fact that injuries played a huge role in this. And um, you know, I wrote about that the other day, just in terms of you know Sean McDermott, Josh Allen, Isaiah McKenzie, a lot of these guys that were kind of let's say it suffering during that game we're not going to make excuses about this or, you know, consolation prizes. They were proud of the effort they put in. Von Miller said it was good medicine is the word he used for this. And, you know, to kind of lower, you're in the spotlight a lot as the Super Bowl favorite. And this kind of knocks them back. Let Miami take over as the undefeated team and be on all the polls as the top team in the league. And now Buffalo can kind of get back to it and focus. But I mean, I don't know about you guys watching. I've been watching football a long time and I was sitting there watching the game like, could anyone else get hurt or, like, leave the game? I've right. never seen – I think it came out to something like 13 players at some point were impacted, whether it was dehydration, whether it was an injury. Sean McDermott talked about it. I don't think I've ever seen a game where that many players had to leave the field in the course of the and, game. And when you're seeing that happen, you're like, well, who's next? Who's right. the third or fourth backup right. here? Like, where, where are we going to go right. in order to replace these guys? But the good news is the Bills have depth, yep. as we're seeing. I mean, we're bringing in new players now, but you could see that there is a plan – if that happens, and these players are ready to step in at any moment to play. Yeah, and I mean, Josh Allen, you know, knock on wood, what did I say last week? I said, like, he's the guy that cannot get hurt. Right. And then we see at the end of the game, like, they're checking his hand on the sideline, and they asked him right after the game, like, are you good, Josh? Because there was reports that he went into the x-ray room, and they were negative, and he said, yeah, I just banged my head on a, a helmet. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Which everyone, I think, exhaled a little bit, because, like, more than just one game loss. It's like, Josh Allen, please be okay. Which goes back to why we said, like, take them out of the game when they're winning. <laughs> right. But I just, I was, I was so, you know, infa or infatuated with the idea of, like, I can't believe that Miami still has a stadium. And I get it's a competitive advantage, but you're looking at these numbers. It's 100 degrees on the field. That's what they were saying. It felt like 100 degrees. The, the Buffalo bench was in the sun the entire game. Miami's was shaded by, like, the end of the first quarter. That has to make a difference throughout the course Huge of impact, the game. Especially when you're wearing a dark uniform, right. as Buffalo was. Uh, you know, but you think about the game coming back here, Miami coming here in December. Yep. Dell, that's a, that's a Saturday to-be-determined game. Could be flexed. Do you think that happens? And would they go earlier? Could they do a Thursday game? I, I'm not the expert here. I don't think they could do a Thursday game, only because um, there's so much that goes into those those games, and I, I don't know what Amazon's contract is with the league. It seems like, like they're advertising football. Good point, right? It seems like they're advertising on on my prime like games like three weeks from now. Yeah, like right. what they're playing? They're playing? It's like oh no, it's that's next week. I'm like, well, they haven't even played this week's games yet. Like, settle down. Good point. But um, when you think about it, even like with equipment managers and stuff like that, and it seems like a very it seems like a rough reward for a team, two teams that are being successful that, that now they got to play on a short week. Right. So maybe extend that to a Sunday night. Which, which is would even, be kind of cool. It's even better, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, and if it happens to the Buffalo Miami game, um, yeah, I mean, quite possibly if both teams continue to trend upward like this. You know, here's the thing: um, I don't think Miami is as good as they look. The, the Bills limited them to like 200 yards of offense. They completely shut down Tyreek Hill. They had that one play to Waddle on third and 22 when the Bills had. Jaquan Johnson and was, was Hamlin in there yeah, as well. Demar Hamlin. Demar yeah. Hamlin. No disrespect to them, but like Jalen Waddle is a first round talent. Like he's, you know, he's he's Jalen Waddle. Um, that's a that's a fluke play. 
And it gets so frustrating. Like after the game, is Tua has Tua arrived? Like no, he hasn't arrived. He threw for 180 yards. <laughs> right, and and like, most people think, how did that guy even make it back into the game? Right. That's well, a whole that's a whole different. different I mean, yeah, that's wow. a whole different thing. But right. like. The Bills, there was at least five plays you can think of or five different opportunities in that game that would have sealed it for, for Buffalo. I am not worried about this team. I'm worried about health in general yeah. for the, you know, the injuries and everything. But um, in terms of the strength of this team, it's just like last year when they lost to the Titans because Josh Allen slipped on the goal line. Right. I left that game and I was saying they're still a good team. Yeah. You know, there's there's they're they're still a good team. Same thing. I said I, I believe truly they beat themselves in that game in the sense that the injuries and everything else, I I'm not worried about Miami long term. Maybe I'm underestimating them, but I still think this is the you know, Buffalo's division. Um, and I'm not too worried about that from an overall and people always talk about, you know, in Buffalo, oh, we got the snow, the cold, all that, and I'm like all right, listen, like, we're all human beings. Like, I'd rather play in that than play in this 100-degree, can't get hydrated, can't breathe. You see every alignment dropping down on the ground. So I'll take the snow and the cold and the wind. There's in, a in reason we aspect. say it feels like football weather. Right. 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 And then it's not 100 degrees. Because right. you're football warming weather, up on the field. It is Buffalo weather. Right. Absolutely. Right. If I could be a little contrarian real quick, though, like, that's the same sun, that's the same stadium sure. that they've been that's playing in point. since the late 80s. Won all, you know? yeah, that's well, a great And point. that they won the seven in a row or whatever it was. Exactly. Now we want to complain about it, but yeah, exactly. So we, you know, the team has been able to succeed there in the past. So you know, at the end of the day, like they, no they, they just got to do better. Both like teams have to play in the conditions, no matter what, yeah. right? You, mostly, you, mostly you, the same conditions. Mostly, like got to be real, mostly, yeah. mostly. But it's but, not like Miami wins every single game in September. And, and you know, right you'll home. hear any good coach say, "Don't blame it on the refs. Don't blame it on the weather. Go out and play your best game." Yep, and, and that's what we're looking forward to next week. Yeah, and and you know, Dell, and, and you know. I'd love to keep you here and talk forever, but unfortunately we do have a time limit. So in terms of, you know, where can people find you if they don't know on social media, where can they find 26 shirts? Just give us a kind of a quick elevator pitch here for, for that. Yeah. Awesome. Again, thank you for having me on um, Twitter at Del Reed, D E L R E I D. And then 26 shirts on all of your favorite social media platforms. Just two, six shirts. Awesome. Congratulations again, man. Can't wait to that two million mark. Very excited for you guys. <laughs> Let's get to one and a half first. But yes, thank you yeah. very much. It's That's crazy. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And we will see you again for another exciting edition and more guests to come here with the Western Podcast for Brad Gelber. I'm Clay Moden. And we'll see you next time.